how to use gradients with the new pattern preview feature in Photoshop 221. Gradients work okay-ish with the pattern preview. There's a lot of problems with it because, of course, gradients are just not like brushes or shapes. So uh, just show an example here. I'm just going to go back to yeah, new. Now, one feature with this pattern preview, unfortunately, it turns itself off if you go back to a fresh document or go back in the history. It's stored away in the history. It's a really odd feature. I don't know why they just didn't have it. But anyway, view and pattern preview. You can remove that if you don't want. Don't show again. Though with all these don't show agains, virtually inevitable, it will reappear randomly. I've always found it. They always seem to come back when you least want them. However, let's go to gradient. So I've got a gradient tool there. Now, one of the ones that work quite nicely, it's reflected gradient. So I'm just going to go to reflect gradient. I'm using difference with the gradient tool. And I'm using, now I've got a whole load of gradients here, legacy gradients. If you haven't got these, just find uh, the video about how to get your gradient presets back so you can find those. So works well with view and new guide layout. Go for two and two. Because what you want is the center. There's the center of that tile. That, near enough the same colors, unfortunately. Slightly uh, confusing, but then just drag out to that edge. Just go from the center to the edge. And you've got your tile. And that's a seamless tile. Still a seamless tile. Now, if I didn't do it from the edge and just did it like this, you could see what happens. It creates a sharp divide. You can create, see, it's not ideal because you can see that doesn't repeat i don't want that so again go from the center go out to there and you can see again you create this design and you can do that with others as well so i'm just going to let's go and check. select a different grade there's another one again go to there the center and out to there you can see your design there and again you could also go the other way of course you go that way and you'll see you've got your design, doesn't work. What you need to do is from the center out to that. That's the best way. Don't suddenly do a tutorial, suddenly think, you know what, it might work a different way. Because it doesn't, never does. It's from center out, center out the other way. So you've got this design here. And again, you can see it's a tile that works really nicely. Now I'm going to go and select another one and let's go for well, that one. Drag that out and then drag. Well, that one's quite hard because you've got a blue. Anyway, it's going to be approximately in the centre there. And you can see again that as soon as you've done that, edit and define pattern. Now, if I go out this way, you can see what happens. You get this again break. So patterns and gradients, well, they're not easy bedfellows. So let's just remove that. Now, you don't have to use these guides. It just makes it easier to do it. I'm going to remove them now. View and clear guides. Now I'm going to show you. You can also use, of course, the other ones as well. This diamond gradient. So if you, as long as you keep it within the confines, you can see the repeat patterns there. Perfectly reasonable. But as soon as, of course, you go outside, if I do that, you got that as well. And you can see, you can create some very abstract designs. You might want that. You might want these nice cuts, cuts like that. Well, you've got that dividing point, perfectly reasonable. But I personally, I'm creating designs, patterns. I like to have them really nicely smooth and seamless. Again, go to radial gradient. And you can do the same. Again, you've got that going there. But as soon as you go over here, you can do that. And again, you've got this perfectly reasonable. No problem there. But as soon as you repeat other things, you can see it starts to get a bit not so nice because you've got that divide between the two. Do that. But you can also, of course, use there, go to the selections, create selection there, and then go to the gradient there, and you've got that design there. Now, of course, if you go to the out and did that, you can see selections only are defined by that area as well. Slightly odd. However, got that selection around it, what you can do, edit and copy and paste, edit and paste, and it's a layer. And you can move that. So you can see you can create all kinds of designs 
Now you'll see if you go to, I can find it, window and layers. You can see there's a slight sort of thing there. You can see it's not, obviously the layer you get is slightly odd. So if you try and resize things, if I try and resize things now, you can see you can end up with a whole bit of a mess there. But you may want that as well. Like I say, you might want to just duplicate that design. You can create some very abstract designs using this pattern tar fish. And you think, oh, you know what? That's what I want. So it's not. What you can also do, of course, I'm just avoiding going over the pattern preview one, you can use smart objects. So you just go there, just create that. And I'm going to create a gradient. Got that design. Control C, Control V, and then I can go to Layer and go down to Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object. So it's a smart object. Now, if I move that around again, you see exactly the same thing, but it's a smart object. That's what it likes to work with smart objects. However, it still does mean that the end result still divides in a weird way, like this. But it does mean you can edit the result later on as well. So that's quite useful. But there you can create all kinds of amazing designs. And of course, you can always hold down the ultra option key and duplicate that design. And you can see it repeated over and over again. But as I say, you can just create abstract designs as well. Just simply drag that out. Doesn't have to be. And you can see sometimes it's perfectly happy. It's weird. The thing is, you've always got to check for there is that it doesn't suddenly go in this weird sort of mode. So it should theoretically work with smart objects. Smart objects are the best way to go forward with selections and copy. But I have noticed there seems to be areas where it does slightly go slightly skew with. So I wouldn't say it's 100% perfect. You can rotate it and do all those sort of things. And also what you can do, you can apply some effects. Now I've done this in earlier running through this thing and I've noticed a few things where it suddenly fails. So some work okay, I suspect. Gaussian blur, you can say do a Gaussian blur there and you can see the blur in effect. Apply, click there. But I went and used liquify and it just fell over on me. So I would say there's some that you re maybe and not so perfect. But you can see you've got the design there. And of course, what you can do, you can always go to layer and new adjustment layers, and you can apply on top of that hue and saturation. Now that will be consistent across, if I've got the properties, let's go to properties, bring the properties over. You can see your design there, you can change, and it will change for the, all of the pattern tiles. And again, what you can also do, you can go to edit and Define pattern at this point, of course, because you're in the pattern, the uh, adjustment layer, it's not going to work. So go to layers, window and layers. And I would suggest the probably the easiest way around at that point is simply to just go to layer and flatten image. And then, of course, we can do edit and define pattern at that point. So there's some things that work really nicely with gradients, adjustments, etc. And there's other things like selection, they don't work. But it's still a great way of creating some very interesting designs using this new pattern preview, even though there's issues with it, I think. Anyway, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please add some comments about what you found with the pattern preview, because maybe like you know, you may find lots of issues with it as well. So you might think, oh, you know what, that's great. And then suddenly there's something seems to happen that doesn't seem to make any sense. And obviously these sort of things, hopefully, will be ironed out in future versions of Photoshop and, uh, and we will get even a more amazing tool. So I'm always adding new tutorials about, obviously, gradients, about Photoshop, Painter, PaintShop Pro, Finity Photo, and all those sort of things. I say, please add some comments, always great. A dislike or like, always appreciated. Thank you much.